here's an example of completing the square in an expression where there's two variables, x and y. And in, toward the end of the video, I'll talk about why you would want to do this. Um, but I don't want to scare anybody off uh, who's just looking at this as an example of completing the square. It's a great example of completing the square even without uh, other things coming into it. So we're just going to think of it as a very basic goal here, and then we'll see why this is a good goal. Rewrite this expression using only one x and one y. And one thing you might note is I didn't write an equation here. I didn't write this equal zero or equal something else. Because I want to emphasize that you can complete the square in an expression, not just an equation. You don't have to have an equals. You don't have to do things on both sides of an, of an equal sign like most, uh, like a lot of books um, do this. So I'm just going to take this thing. And what I'm going to do, um, I purposely have some coefficients in front of here because that makes it a little harder. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the x's together, and it's going to be essential to take that 4 out of both things that have x's together because I want to build a little house where the x stuff will live. There's the x house, and to make the technique work uh, easily, you want to factor out the 4 from the x squared, and in order to have all the stuff in the same house, that means I have to factor out the 4 from the, uh, from the, from the minus 12x as well. And now I'm going to factor out stuff from the y. We're going to get y squared plus 4y. Now, already this is kind of contrived because these are integers. These could have been rational numbers, could have been fractions, and that wouldn't screw up the process at all. And I, there will be some fractions coming in uh, soon, but I didn't want to make it too fraction heavy. Okay, and then just plus 19. Okay, so I just grouped. Now is the key step. What I want to do is I would like to write this one. Let me work with the y squared first. So let's just say 4, and I'm going to just put some open parentheses there. And then plus 5, and I'm going to work on the y's. And one of the things about this way of completing the square is everything about this next step is going to happen inside these parentheses. And I think that's good to show that completing the square is really a really local operation. It doesn't have to be dealing with the whole expression or both sides of an equal sign or whatever. What I'd love is if this were y squared plus 4y equals plus 4, so here on my scratch pad, I'll just note that y squared plus 4y plus 4, hey, that would be a perfect square. That would be y plus 2 quantity squared. Because in general, if I have y plus k squared, that's equal to y squared plus 2ky plus k squared. Hmm. So if I have y plus a number squared, it's going to give me this kind of thing, sort of. It's going to give me y squared. It's going to be a number times y. But it's also going to give me a number. Well, that's not that hard to fix. And the key thing is that this number that shows up in front of the y is double this number. So I want to go backwards. I want to go from here to here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fudge it a little bit. I'm going to say, you know, that looks kind of like y plus 2 squared. I'm going to write it down. And I, but the thing is, it's only going to be legal if this, y squared plus 4y, is really, really equal to y plus 2 squared. It's not. But I have done a scratch calculation that tells me how to fix that. y plus 2 squared is y squared plus 4y plus 4. And so all I need to do is I need to subtract 4. Because y plus 2 squared minus 4, that'll kill that 4 off, and that will be exactly y squared plus 4y. So that's what I, I usually do. So the, the process, what I usually do, I was trying to explain it a little bit, but usually the, the process here is I divide that 4 that I saw in front of the y by 2, and then I write y plus 2 squared, and then that's what I did over here. I should probably put it over here, actually. Okay, and then in the scratch paper, if I need to, sometimes it's easy enough to do in your head or whatever. In the scratch, if I need to, I just write out what that would be. I just write out y plus 2 quantity squared. That's y squared plus 4y. Because I took plus 4. Because I the, the 2 was half of the 4, these guys are guaranteed to match. This guy is not going to match what I have here because I don't have a number here. But it's easy to do to fix that. I just subtract it off. OK. The plus 19 is going to come along for the ride. Now, x squared minus 3x, let's do that process again. I take x minus, now here's where the fraction comes in, 3 halves squared 
that would match the x squared. It would match the minus 3x. Let's do the scratch calculation explicitly. And very often with simple examples, whoops, um, you won't have to do the scratch explicitly, but it doesn't hurt you. So let's see, x minus 3 halves squared by this rule is going to be x squared minus 3x. It's 2 times 3 halves times x with a minus. And then plus this squared. And one really important thing is that's always, always, always plus because it's a square. Very easy to get the signs wrong and get a minus instead here. That's always plus. So let's see. Is x squared minus 3x exactly equal to x minus 3 halves quantity squared? Nope, it's not. I have really put in an extra 9 fourths. Okay, I can fix that. Subtract off the 9 fourths. This is always going to be subtracted because this is always going to be a square that you've added in accidentally and have to fix. Okay, now the rest of it's pretty easy. I just need to collect these constants together. I've done the main job of writing it with only one x and one y. It's just a little garbage collection. So now, now it's time to break up those houses and kind of mix the constants together just by um, distributing it across the four. So x minus 3 halves quantity squared minus 9 plus 5 times y plus 2 quantity squared minus 20 plus 19. And then that's just going to be well, I'll just copy it to be quick. And then so um, it's going to be, that's a minus 1, minus 9, so it's minus 10. Minus 10 together. Okay. So there I've got this expression. I've rewritten it with only one x and one y. Why on earth is such, that such a good idea? Oh, boy, is it a good idea. So for example, and here's where you have to know a little bit about like ellipses and stuff. Suppose we actually had this as an equation. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this with this as an equation. I know, I know it's kind of hard to read right now, but it's going to reformat in just a second. Bear with me here. I forgot it would do that. OK. So here, I've just done all this work on this side. I never had to go over to the other side. I could now, since there's another side of the equation, but I didn't have to. And now, at the very end here, I'm just going to leave this on the left-hand side and then say equals 10. So this is getting very close to the standard form for an ellipse. All I have to do is divide by 10. OK, so I'm going to take this stuff. Ooh, let's see. Oh, Let's put it all over. Um, put it the equal sign. OK, so we're going to divide by 10. So that'll be 1. This will be 5 over 10, which is so that'll be divided by 2. And then this will be 4 over 10, ooh, which is divided by 10 fourths. Ooh, that's a little ugly. But it's intentional. I wanted to make sure that these weren't amazingly pretty. OK? So 4 over 10, when you write it intentionally as a denominator, is uh, going to be at 1 over 10 fourths. So we're almost done with putting it in the standard form for a shifted ellipse. I just want to write those things as squares. This is going to be. the square of root 10 over 2. And then I'm going to write this as the square of root 2. Seems a little perverse, but that says that this is going to be an ellipse with a, the semi-major axis, equal to root 10 over 2, b equals root 2, and center at the shift here is 3 halves, because remember it's it goes backwards, 3 halves comma minus 2. That would allow us to plot this, to graph this ellipse and understand this ellipse and th do things like foci and stuff like that, although I won't do it. Um, whereas just staring at this, it's really hard to, n hard to know what's going on. You see enough of these, you start getting the idea, OK, that's a shifted ellipse. Somehow this x and the y they don't introduce like straight lines or something. It, you can imagine like, OK, this is something I'm familiar with with ellipse, but maybe this makes straight lines because I'm used to that doing. Doesn't do that. How do we figure out what it does? We've got to do this. We've got to package up so that it's only one x and one y, and so that it actually appears as just a shifted version of x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. And that is uh, incredibly useful, and that's where completing the square really, really, really comes into its own.